Hello there. I'm going to show you how I built a new version of my iron carbon battery. It's actually two cells that are connected in a series configuration that will double the voltage of the cell. The increased voltage should increase the top speed of the electric vehicle that I featured in the first video, and I'll be testing it that later on in this video. Okay, here are the basic components of this series connected cells. First components are the two graphoil sheets that are coated with active carbon the same way uh, as in the first video. But we must note that there are no connection tabs and there is no plastic laminate on the back of these electrodes because I actually want conductivity uh, from the uh, throughout the cell from front to back. Okay, the second component is filter paper separators. <clears throat> Third component are two two by two inch thin low carbon steel iron anodes and also to note are no connection tabs just two by two inch squares. Last component is a roll of Kapton tape. Okay, now I'll show you how uh, the cells are assembled. Now I will assemble the components of the cell. First, I lay down a sheet of Kapton tape on the sheet of glass, sticky side up. Uh, it's held down with two strips of masking tape temporarily. Uh, and also I have underneath two paper templates to make it easier uh, to cut out the, the windows, the one by one inch windows. Okay, then the, the window with an exacto knife, the one inch by one inch windows are cut out and then these are lifted out like this. Like that. After the two window cutouts are removed, the first Kapton layer is ready for the cell components. Okay. First I laid down the coated graphoil sheets, coated side up. The filter paper separators are now laid on top next. Now I add the uh, electrolyte, which is two molar ferric chloride. Okay, and that's just left to soak in uh, for 20 minutes. After soaking in the electrolyte for about 20 minutes, the iron anode is placed on top of each cell. Next, the cells are sealed up by laying down strips of capped on tape on top of the stack, <clears throat> leaving a one by one inch open window on top of the uh, iron anode. This will be 
the negative connections on the on the cells. Okay, now that the cells are all sealed up, they're just cut out and uh, ready to be tested. Here are the finished cells. <clears throat> they both weigh about 3.3 grams each. They're pretty thin, pretty lightweight. And uh, when I stack the cells uh, in, in series, I put a, include a square of graph foil like that in between uh, to ensure good connection between the cells and then lay it on top and I also uh, put some scotch tape around the edges to hold the, uh, the whole assembly together okay I'll take a minute to show you how the eBay solar car featured in the first video was further modified to accommodate the two cell higher voltage battery. I removed the two stainless steel clips used in the first version and added two copper contacts on the ends of the spring wire supports. The contacts were made from two pieces of thin copper sheet that are soldered together. The top strip is bent so that forms a tube which the spring wire slides into and pivots on. Then thin magnet wires were soldered in uh, to make the connection to the motor. I glued a piece of small block of upholstery foam to the front of the frame and cut a slit in it to help hold the battery in place. And to serve as an on-off switch, I just slip a piece of polyethylene between the battery and the terminal, between the battery terminal and the copper contact. So now when the plastic strip is pulled, the circuit is complete and the motor starts. Okay, I'll charge the battery and we'll see if the vehicle is faster now with the higher voltage battery. Okay. So the battery's been charged for five minutes at three volts. Now that's all I have to do is pull this insulating piece of plastic out. It should, it'll contact the battery and the car will start. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> 